Um, hello, I'm Ted Kinsman. I'm uh, a professor of photographic sciences here at RIT. And today I'm going to show you some kind of basics of what we do with slit scan photography, how it can be used to measure stuff, as well as uh, some artistic uses as we uh, look at a flower in rotation, uh, which is everybody's favorite. Um, there's some software that you're going to need. Um, and the first thing that you're going to need, I'm going to share a screen here and um, go to my desktop. And what we're going to go after here is a piece of software called slit scan and it runs in a, an environment called processing. So uh, the slit scan software is free and it's uh, slitscan.com. You go to this website here and you can come over here and you say download details, click here. Um, once you, you click on that link, you'll see the whole download uh, page and there's some special procedures for the, the download. Um, once I go over to here to processing, so this slit scan program runs in another piece of software, which is um, processing. So it's, it's this particular download. Uh, it's from uh, www.processing.org download. The website looks like this. Um, and you pick the operating system that, that you're currently running. So the slit scan program will run in the processing environment. So let's first talk about some of the libraries you got to put in processing. And if you think this is a very complicated problem process, it's not particularly. So let's, um, here's processing and it's up and running on my computer um, right here. And it looks like, oh my goodness, look at all this mess. Um, but this actually is the slit scan code. Um, when I come up here to the top window, I'm going to sit under sketch here at the very top. I'm going to come down, I'm going to say import library, add library under this directory, and it's going to come up with a big pile of, of possible libraries. The library that I'm going to need, though, is a library that looks at all of the different uh, types of video, and it's this one right here. And I'm going to click on that, and I say install. It's not going to let me install it because I just installed it a few minutes ago. So anyhow, you have to have that library before we get going. Now we're going to be looking at some video and let's pull up that video to see what it particularly looks like. So what we're going to do here is we're going to record a race with two different uh, cars. And these are the little um, Hot Wheel cars. Over here, I've got the camera, which is a high speed camera and it's a Kronos and it's going to record at um, 1000 uh, and 57 frames per second, which is kind of an odd number, but uh, it's, it's what we have uh, on this particular camera. So um, not super fast because it's, uh, it's a toy car race, so um, we can make it work. Um, here I'm going to just verify that it's 1057 frames per second, and uh, I'm going to make sure all the settings are okay. So uh, that's, that's all set. So uh, the way that this works is I'm going to have uh, a car race here and the car race is I'm going to turn on the camera once I let the cars uh, I'm going to set them up so the front of the cars are all with each other. I'm going to turn on the high speed camera, let the cars go, turn off the high speed camera and now I'm going to have to uh, do some some work with the uh, the back of the high speed camera. Camera's tilted um, and it's it's aligned with the track so that we're going to measure the velocity of the cars as they go in this direction. So that's kind of a, a little tip here. Um, to record everything here, it's, it's in the buffer now. It's locked in the buffer. I'm going to come over here and hit play. And then I'm going to move this slider on the bottom here up to where the cars start to go by. And at some point here, I'll start to see uh, the cars go by. There's the cars. I'm going to back it up just a little bit. I'm going to put my mark for the start of the recording. I'm going to go to the after the cars pass. I'm going to mark the end of the recording and now I'm going to tell it to save and it will save to that that drive at this point and it'll take a little while. This uh, this is a Kronos camera, uh, not the fastest read write to the card and uh, occasionally there are some some uh, errors writing to that card. So if you're doing something super important, um, make sure you save it twice. So eventually that's going to be saved. There we go. 
and we're all set to go to the next part where we're going to do the analysis of this uh, video with uh, some slit scan software. Um, the video that we are going to be looking at is uh, a video of a car race and it looks like this. So here's my car race. It might not look that exciting. It's very grainy. High speed cameras are known for their data collection. Um, you have to have big bucks to get a, a camera that is not um, as grainy as this one. So there's our car race. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting. It, it said it was going to record it at one speed, but it actually recorded it at a little bit faster speed. Um, which I guess um, I didn't hit the right button on the touch screen on the back, which is a little tricky. So um, we're gonna use this video um, to do the analysis. So because this is a long directory here of, of stuff from the, the, uh, the high-speed camera, I'm gonna rename this file uh, yellow uh, car race. And I'm also going to put in this title the uh, the speed that it was recorded at, and I happen to have it on another sheet of paper here. So this speed was uh, 1,171 frames per second, and that will help me uh, remember that for the analysis. Um, and we should probably do a little bit of math with that. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I, I know that this file uh, is in the wrong directory for the slit scan software. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my uh, desktop. I, I think I put it under the desktop and uh, come down to the slit scan software, which is right here. Now the slit scan software, it puts in two different directories. One is for still images and the second is for video. We're gonna deal with a video, um, which is this directory. Um, under data, I'm going to put my data file, which is the car race, and uh, it should be there, maybe. Um, doesn't look like it put it there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open a, a second browser window here and um, go back to downloads. And I'm just gonna copy that whole file there because uh, I don't really care if it's if it's in another directory or not. It's going to be in that data file right there. So there it is. Now I'm going to have to modify this scan software a little bit. And as I do this, it's it sometimes people are scared to modify code, but um, modify it as much as you want. Just don't save it as a new as a new modified file. Save don't don't save it. Just keep the original slit scan software there. I'm going to go to the slit scan directory. I've moved the, the video in the data file. Now keep in mind that this, that our file now has a new name and it's called yellow car race 1171, which stands for the feet uh, the frames per second that the car was taken at. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna copy the car name, the, the file name down. And the file below it here is the slit scan, the actual program that's gonna run in the processing environment. So I'm going to click on that and there's uh, processing starts and uh, the slit scan software will start up and it asks me, always asks me to update. I'm going to say no. I'm going to make uh, this larger so we can see what the code looks like. So here's some parts of the code uh, that need to be changed. First off, what is the file name of the, uh, the data? So the data is the movie that I made and it's this big long name. It ends here, it ends with uh, MP4. Super important to have that library of different video formats in the processing uh, program. The next thing is I have to tell it what the new name of this output file is. And I'm gonna call it yellow race. Um, try not to use any spaces in uh, these kinds of programs. Uh, Next, horizontal slit. The horizontal slit sits flat, of course. I don't want that. I want to take a slit this way in that video stream of the little car race. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say false. And if it's correct, it'll change it um, to green. 
Uh, the next variable down here is a 0.5, and this takes the, the slit exactly in the center at 0.5. Uh, by changing it, I can go over to the other side, um, like 0.1 would be over here in the picture of me. Um, as we go over here, it's going to be like 0.9. So we're all set to run it, and I'm going to come up here and hit the run button. And uh, what is going on here is at the very bottom of this, you'll see that car race. And at the thing that's going on up top is the extraction of the data. So in a slit scan. Now there's some odd things about this. First off, the cars are backwards. And that's because in this graph, time is going from left to right. And each of these cars is, is shortened because the aspect ratio of the height of the car to the length of the car isn't quite right. I can change that aspect ratio by going to um, Photoshop and, and, and changing it, but I don't want, really want to do that. I want to have the actual real data and I want to have um, uh, some measurements. So let's do some of those measurements right now. Um, here's the yellow car race. You'll see it's, it's kept in this slit cam V1 folder and it'll be down in this direction. I'm going to move that file to Photoshop. And uh, there's the, the file, uh, what the image looks like. Now, keep in mind that time is going left to right. Each pixel going up and down here, up and down, represents 1, 1,171 seconds of a second. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to measure the distance that this car is long in pixels. So here's this car, and I look up top here and I find out that the length of this car is uh, 112 uh, pixels long. So here's our slit scan image. It's a car, and keep in mind that time is going in this direction. The distance of this car is, in reality, six centimeters, six centimeters wide. Now, when we look at this picture, we find out that it's made out of all these little tiny pix pixels, columns of pixels, and there is 112 pixels wide. We also know some stuff about this frame rate. The frame rate here was that 1,171 frames per second. That means that each one of these little columns represents a little slice of time of 1 over 1171 seconds. Now, with all of this stuff, we can put it together and get the velocity of the car. And we know, first off, how long did it take this car to pass this point? Well, we take the number of pixels, we multiply by the time for each pixel, and that becomes 1, 1, two pixels, we multiply by one over 1171 seconds, and we end up with how long it takes. And this takes 0 0.095 seconds to go by. Well, we know another equation about velocity, and these are traveling at their terminal velocity. They're not, they're not accelerating or decelerating, they're just moving as fast as they can is distance over time. Well, the distance here that we're talking about is the size of the car, and that becomes six centimeters. And the time is the time that it took for it to go by, which is 0 0.095 seconds. So taking that all into consideration, we get 63.2 centimeters per second. And that's the velocity of that car in the race. Now, keep in mind that this technique can be used for anything any kind of slit scan, as long as you know the frames per second of the time uh, of the video, um, you can measure just about anything. Of course, it helps you have to know the, the size of the object. Or okay, over the years, I've gotten a lot of questions about what is peripheral streak photography, how is it done, and what does it do with these, uh, these flowers? So here, what I have is a turntable. Uh, and it's set up with the flower exactly over the axis of rotation. 
Now the camera is also pointed exactly at that axis of rotation so that when this flower rotates, it pretty much stays within the same spot in the frame. I've got a tungsten light hooked up here and I've got a Canon 5D Mark III uh, running a video um, and it's got a black background. So let's look at this, this uh, rotation stage. This is just a surplus stage. Um, it's got a piece of cardboard on it. It's got a pumpkin on it for counterweight because the, uh, the cup is so far off axis. So it's gonna rotate like this, but I want the picture to be pretty wide. Matter of fact, I'd like the picture to be 3,000 pixels wide at least. So if I shoot the video right now, uh, it's rotating so fast that the resulting uh, streak image will be too short. So the way around that is to slow down the stage uh, so that it rotates about once every three minutes. So that's what we're gonna do here. Um, and it turns out that if I rotate this uh, down around 1.6 or so, it's, it's pretty slow and it takes a few minutes to rotate. So what I'm gonna do there is I've got the camera uh, pretty much set up. I'm just gonna let it run. So we've just seen how uh, to collect a, a flower rotation using a rotating stage plus a, a camera recording a video. Um, let's look and see how that is, is extracted. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is once again, share my screen and my desktop. Uh, I am not gonna be looking at this particular image anymore. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at what that camera recorded uh, that is underneath my downloads folder and it turns out to be this file. So here's the flower in motion and uh, not, not, I'm speeding up the video as we go around. It's like, okay. Uh, also the video's on its side. So that will also uh, tell us uh, a few things that we have to do to modify that slit extraction program. Keep so, in mind that that flower is- a Oh, there it says it again. So uh, there's the flower video and I need to move this flower video over here to this data video. Um, these flower videos are big. This is a little bit over two gig gigabytes in size. So um, once again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the name of it. And I've already got the processing uh, program running with the software, um, but I'm just gonna relaunch it right here, uh, which is, Right here, here's the yellow car race that we just did. So instead of the yellow car race, I'm gonna say, hey, let's put this, the name of that flower rotation in there. And uh, I'm going to call it flower A. Um, now keep in mind that, that this flower uh, was, was recorded vertically, but we put this video sideways. So now it becomes a horizontal slit. So this has to be once again, set to true. And I'm going to say it's in the center. I don't know for sure, but I'm hoping it's in the center. Now I, I might have to change that, but let's run this piece of software. And uh, here it goes. For one complete. And I, uh, I can't turn the audio off, but I get the audio too. And uh, it'll take a while. So, so this, this is, is going to run for quite a while. And this is a way so at this point, it's uh, completed uh, the extraction. I'm going to come over here, and I know it's called uh, Flower A. And I'm going to bring it down into Photoshop so we can inspect it. And uh, we will zoom in on it. And so it's a pretty decent uh, picture. We can pan around, and we can see that it's a flower. And it's a peripheral streak flower all the way around. Um, Kind of in the, much more interesting than, than some of the earlier peripheral streaks of tire wear patterns and stuff. Um, and it's, it's pretty big. And uh, the reason it's so big is because I think the camera was set at 60 uh, frames a second extraction. When I look at this image, um, I can look at the image size and I find out it's 9,000, uh, 9,361 pixels wide by uh, the characteristic video, which is uh, 1,920 pixels high. So uh, this is a peripheral streak image, but let's go back and look at a twisty flower image. Um, and to do that, I'm gonna go back and launch um, the processing environment, which is here. And instead of uh, changing this to uh, true for a flat line, I'm gonna say uh, it's, it's at 90 degrees to that. I'm gonna 
um, hope that uh, we're going to say false. Um, And we'll run this. I'm not sure where in the image we're going to take that that slit, but we'll uh, we'll run it and we'll see what happens with that. Pretty twisty flower, um, and sometimes we, we put it sideways or whatever. Um, and I'm going to come in and. Probably I'm going to do some adjustments on the curves to make it look just a little bit, uh, maybe there and pull in the ends just to, yeah, maybe not. Uh, probably just pull in just a little bit to add the image, just a little bit of punch to it. And then uh, adjust those curves, probably just bring them down just a little bit. Let's see. Um, so there's a finished twisty flower. Um, and so that's how the twisty flowers are gone, are, are done. And uh, this is all part of peripheral streak photography and slit scan photography. And of course, the one thing that I haven't talked to you about is if you mount the camera on the rotation stage, uh, you can get a panoramic picture, which is ultra cool. And also one of the early techniques for generating panoramic pictures. So that's all for now. Hope you learned something, at least a little bit about slit scan. Um, take care. Bye-bye.